Hey Brain Police 2, it's Buddha Gem, and I'd like to answer your question how I became an anarchist. And my simple response is I don't think I ever became an anarchist. It's not something like Buddhism where, you know, there was this introduction, you know, kind of uh, to certain Buddhist writings, um, study, and then a conscious decision to follow a certain path. When I look back at my life, I think I was always an anarchist. What I mean by that, um, I can remember I, it, very early in childhood, I, I, you know, I went to a uh, private Christian school as a kid, and I remember one night, one day, I was very young, I, you know, this is kindergarten, first grade, something like that, and the teacher's telling us how God created everything didn't sit too well with me because I knew my dad every day he went to work and he made steel he was a steel worker I raised my hand and I made an objection I said you know my dad makes steel that's one thing God doesn't make and the teacher you know came up with this convoluted story of well God makes all the things possible so that my dad can make steel and even then I kind of you know I, I understood that was complete bullshit because bottom line God doesn't make steel my dad did you know my dad did for 40 years as a union steel worker and I mean that's just one example I, you know I got a lot of trouble for it um, got in a lot of trouble <laughs> from authority figures over the years and as a preteen teenager skater um, heavily into punk music and the Dead Kennedys, the suicidal tendencies, the misfits, um, the Dead Milkmen, uh, cramps, uh, I mean, you know, on and on. The idea of anarchy was first brought to my attention, you know, that beautiful A in the circle. Something I've drawn more than any th symbol ever. It was on my peachy folders. It was on my textbooks. It's on my tools today. It's on my hard hats. It's on the, every job I've ever been to. I've drawn that symbol. And at the time, it meant freedom. It meant to question authority. Who are you? Who, why are you telling me what to do? You know, which is very normal, I think, for teenagers to question authority as we're coming into our own. We've all seen the comments that anarchy's for, you know, kids. And there's some truth to that. But I'll tell you what, that the same feeling I had when I drew that symbol as a, you know, 11, 12 year old, um, I have the same feeling today when I draw that symbol. Because and, and I'm not trying to pretend I had some kind of uh, sophisticated understanding of anarchy. It's very simple. You know, punk, rebellious, you know, attitude. I mean, you know, no sophisticated understanding of the state or anything like that. But the, the, the underlying sentiment was the same. And... Uh, I guess my first real introduction to anarchist thought was in my junior year of college at Pitzer. Um, I took the most amazing political science course. Um, Anarchism in the Internet, I think it was called. And it blew me away because here, you know, this radical idea that I had since, you know, always really. Um, you know, my beautiful little anarchy symbol. And here were the most amazing uh, thinkers and people down through the ages talking and writing about this idea. Um, and not just talking and writing about it, but dying for it, fighting for it, staging revolutions around the world, organizing workers, um, you know, with this crazy notion that <laughs> We don't need bosses. We don't need politicians. Uh, you know, if voting worked, it would be illegal. I mean, 
you know, it was a more profound and more uh, sophisticated understanding of anarchy, to be sure. But the underlying sentiments were, were there, that we should be free to figure things out, to make our own decisions, to not be coerced by social structures or, you know, um, authority. This idea that humans really should be free. Um, and while it, it increased my understanding and gave me a broader perspective of anarchism, it didn't make me an anarchist. You know, I think when I question that teacher's presumption uh, that God created everything, I was just as much an anarchist then as I am today. I know more now. I understand the history and the theories better. But I don't think I'm any more of an anarchist than I was then. And so before I go, just want to, you know, close with my favorite quote from Emma Goldman, who's probably my favorite anarchist philosopher. And it goes like this. Anarchism, then, really stands for the liberation of the human mind from the dominion of religion. The liberation of the human body from the dominion of property. Liberation from the shackles and restraints of government. Anarchism stands for a social order based on the free grouping of individuals for the purpose of producing real social wealth. An order that will guarantee to every human being free access to the earth and full enjoyment of the necessities of life according to indiv individual desires, tastes, and inclinations. This is not a wild fancy or an aberration of the mind. It is the conclusion arrived at by a host of intellectual men and women the world over a conclusion resulting from the close and studious observation of the tendencies of modern society, individual liberty, and economic equality, the twin forces for this birth of what is fine and true in man. Anarchism is freedom, it's liberation. And I think it's a natural human inclination. And as Noam Chomsky noted in his uh, introduction to uh, Notes on Anarchism, it is a tendency in human history, not a fixed, closed um, system. That is, I don't think any of us really suppose, you know, there's this fixed dogmatic blueprint we have that we're going to put in place in the future it's something we live in our lives right now and we implement it as best we can in this topsy-turvy world and I think each one of us whether we're market anarchists or whatever kind of anarchists we are we want to be free thanks Brain Police too